Hey, baby kids, welcome back to another week of July. Well, we have another water fact for you, and this water fact is pretty close to home. It's about Niagara Falls, and I have three special facts about Niagara Falls. Did you know that the Canadian side of Niagara Falls is bigger than the American side? Woo, go Canada! Did you also know that Niagara Falls is a huge hydropower source for Ontario? That's pretty cool. And did you know that five people have done a tightrope walk over Niagara Falls? Wow, that would be scary and slippery. Well, friends, we hope you've been enjoying these stories throughout the month. Again, this is a great story coming up today, and it's all about kids. You'll have to see what it is. But before we get to our Bible story, we obviously have our worship song and our Baby You Kids prayers. Boys and girls, you've been doing such a great job praying this month, and we want to look at another one today. Take a look. Thank you, God, for loving me. I wish you forgive me. Amen. turn to you. You are my help when I need wisdom. You always see me through. To know that you're chasing after me makes me want to run to where you are. God, you make this journey worth it. I give you all my heart. When I don't know Bible. It's 66 books of history, 
Stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Mark, chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. As Jesus traveled teaching and healing people, he grew more and more popular. Crowds gathered everywhere he went, and people clamored for his attention. Jesus' friends must have felt like they were on a wild ride some days. This is all getting out of hand. Some days we hardly get to talk to him. It's like we're just here for crowd control. Jesus has the Pharisees going after him at every turn, and half of Galilee wants him to heal a blister or fix a sore toe. As Jesus and his friends traveled toward Jerusalem, they stopped at a town across the Jordan River. Once again, religious leaders tried to heckle Jesus. They won't leave him alone. After the Pharisees finally left, the disciples gathered around Jesus. At least he gets a break now. Yeah, and we get to actually hang out with him. Just us. No loud, demanding crowds. To ruckus. <laughs> Jesus' friends looked up to see another group coming their way. Moms, dads, and a whole group of small children. You gotta be kidding me. We're not running a babysitting service. They probably want Jesus to bless their kids. He's been busy all day with leaders and, and, and people with real needs. He doesn't have time for a bunch of snotty toddlers. Many families must have had the same idea because they all made their way towards Jesus. Some kids ran around shrieking while others held tightly to their parents and watched with big eyes. Please, could Jesus bless my little girl? A and my boys, if he could just lay his hands on them. I brought my little granddaughter. Hold it, hold it. Jesus can't see you right now. He's tired, not to be harsh, but He's got bigger fish to fry. You know who you're asking to talk with? I saw Jesus face down the wind and waves. He can heal sickness and turn one meal into a feast for 5,000. And you want him to waste his time singing Itsy Bitsy Spider. When you put it like that. Jesus heard the commotion. He quickly came forward to see for himself. Sorry, these people want you to bless their kids. Yeah. They're about to turn this place into a circus. Don't worry, we'll get them out of here. Stop. What? Let the little children come to me. For reals? Don't keep them. God's kingdom belongs to people like them. Um, okay. Change of plan. Go ahead and bring your kiddos. Line up. Let's keep this orderly. There was something about Jesus that made every single child feel safe. They crowded around him laughing and talking and asking all of their questions at once. Jesus, I hooded my finger. See my boat? It goes swish, swish underwater, but my daddy won't let me fish with him at night because it's past my bedtime and do you like rabbits? Jesus, I want to play hide and seek. Children were considered the least important people of all at this time, but Jesus stopped everything to welcome them with his arms open wide. He cradled wide-eyed babies. He scooped up wiggling toddlers to sit on his lap. Jesus may have even played hide and seek with a few rambunctious three-year-olds. I think he's actually enjoying this. He's really good with them. It's been way longer than he spent talking to the Pharisees. Jesus, who could command a wild storm to stop with the power of his voice, chose to gently rock a fussy baby. He blessed a four-year-old as she told her epic story, and he may have even healed a few skin knees. After a time, Jesus looked up to smile at his friends and the grown-ups who watched. What I'm about to tell you is true. Anyone who will not receive God's kingdom like a little child will never enter it. Us? Like kids? Jesus was not just showing the crowd that children were important. He was actually telling them that they needed to come to him just like those kids, full of imagination and ready for adventure. And with complete trust, that all of their needs would be met. Looks like those kids need a couple more people for tag. I'm in. Why not? Jesus made it clear to his followers that every single child is valuable to God and that God can give you the strength to be gentle.
who do you spend the most time with? Is it your mom, your dad, your brother, your sister, your teacher, or your friends? You know, when you spend a lot of time with certain people, you might become more like them. For example, my friend who is from the UK has a British accent. But as she has been living in Canada for a long while and is surrounded by Canadians, she is starting to lose her British accent and she sounds more and more like someone with a Canadian accent. Jesus' disciples spend a lot of time with Jesus and they have been learning to become more and more like Jesus. However, in today's Bible narrative, the disciples had a very different opinion of the children than Jesus. The disciples thought that it was a waste of Jesus' time to attend to the children, but Jesus thought very differently. Not only did Jesus allow the children to come to him to receive his blessings, Jesus also said something about the children that surprised everyone. Jesus said, The kingdom of God belongs to such as these. To the children. Well, Jesus wanted people to know that the kingdom of God is different from the world we see. God does not care about our physical strength, our intelligence, the amount of money and influence we have, or whether we are in the popular crowd. God only cares whether we can trust in Him with all our heart, just like how you trust your parents or those who love you. Remember that God does not care about your accomplishments, your looks, your abilities. He doesn't care about any of that. What God really cares about is your heart. Today, we learn that God loves us and He wants us to simply love Him and to trust in the good news of Jesus. Now, children, it's time for preschool service. is helping me I can do the things that he does I can love like Jesus I believe his light can shine through me I can do the things that he does I can love like Jesus
my fantastic day. I got to hold my new baby cousin. She is so little. Just like this. I was so excited to hold her. But my aunt said I have to practice being gentle first. She gave me this feather so I can try being really, really gentle. And then I got to hold my baby cousin for real. She reached out her tiny little hand and grabbed hold of my finger so tight. And then my aunt said I could help give her a bath. I thought we would make super big waves to make her laugh. Splish, splash, we are taking a bath. But my aunt said she's not big enough for big splashes yet. That is too rough. We had to be so super gentle instead. I'm glad I got to practice gentleness with the feather first. Who? Who? It's Ollie! Hello, Luca. Who? Who? Being a bird today, are you? Oh, hi, Ollie. No, I'm using this feather to remember to be gentle with my baby cousin. Gentleness is important. It's true. Jesus was gentle, and we all can be too. Listen to this story. Just follow me through. Who? Who? Follow me through. Follow me through. Who? Oh, I've got a Bible story for me and you. <gasps> well, hello there. I'm Aisha. Welcome to my cupcake food truck. Do you want to see my latest creation? Ta-da! <laughs> These are my fancy feather cupcakes. I made them for my friend's party. Look at those feathers. Have you ever touched a feather? They are so soft and light and gentle, which is what today's story is about. If you're ready for a story on the count of three, yell, tell me a story. One, two, three, tell me a story. Today's true story from the Bible begins with Jesus teaching a group of people. It was very exciting. Everyone wanted to talk to him. Talk to me, Jesus! Talk to me! Talk to me! The crowd said. Many parents brought their children to see Jesus. They wanted their children to be so close that Jesus could touch them. But when the little children went up to Jesus, Jesus' friends, the disciples, told the children to go away. The disciples were not being gentle. Do you know what the word gentle means? It's like when you're playing with a friend and they take your toy away. You can kindly ask for it back and not yell or use mean words. That's being gentle. In the story, were Jesus' friends being gentle? No, but Jesus was gentle. He said, wait, let the little children come to me. Jesus let them come right up to the front. He hugged them and was kind and talked to them. Was Jesus being gentle? <laughs> yes! And Jesus wants to help us be gentle too. Like when you're with a new baby, we need to be gentle with our hands and feet when we are around them. Or when your friends are playing with a puzzle but you want to play something else. Instead of shouting your angry words, you can use gentle words and ask them to play something else. You use gentle hands so you don't hurt the baby, and you use gentle words so you don't hurt your friend's feelings. Jesus can help us choose to be gentle. Jesus can help us do everything. <laughs> did you like the story? If you did, give it two thumbs up. Two thumbs up. <gasps> hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who can help you do everything? Jesus can help me do everything. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who can help you do everything? Jesus can help me do everything. <laughs> That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. See you next time. Bye. So there's your story, and it's all true. Jesus was gentle with the children. And he can help us choose gentleness, too. Thanks, Ollie! 
Goodbye to you. Hoo, hoo. Wow! Jesus was gentle and welcomed the children. Jesus can help me choose gentleness too. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! Oh, hey! One of our painted rocks has a feather on it. This can remind us to always choose gentleness. See you next time! Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. John 14, 6. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. John 14, 6. Wow, baby kids, Jesus loves children so much. Also, did you know, baby kids, that Jesus can help us choose gentleness? Can we say that together? Jesus can help us choose gentleness. One more time. Jesus can help us choose gentleness. That's right, friends, and you better believe it. All right, we'll see you next week right here. Bye-bye.